Uh, before we get started, uh, last week I had the pleasure of attending a uh, leadership conference down in North Carolina uh, with Lieutenant General Glisson and uh, Rear Admiral Chamberlain, uh, Admiral Keller, and uh, General Malashenko. Uh, one of the things that came out uh, uh, very loudly and consistently from them is their gratitude to the agency workforce for all the wonderful work we continue to do, even in the face of tremendous financial pressure to uh, do things cheaper, do things faster, and do things better. And included, of course, in that financial pressure is, uh, is the requirement to, to downsize. Uh, significant downsizing efforts going underway in the agency. Uh, General Glisson put up a chart of the agency's manpower profile from 1964 through present times and projected out what the agency is going to look like in 2005. And uh, plans will, will evolve the agency to a workforce that is smaller when it initially started in 1964, but of course is doing much, much, much more than, uh, than 1964 with, uh, with less people. And, uh, and in many regards, that is a testament to the creativity and innovation and can-do spirit of all of you, because much of that runs on information technology and uh, the standard systems that continue to support the agency and the warfighter today are systems that grew up right here in Columbus and in our detachments uh, throughout the United States. Uh, so please, uh, if you could take a minute to applaud yourself for all the great work you do. I'd appreciate it uh, because you certainly deserve it. So thanks a lot. Now, uh, the last time I was uh, up here talking to you, the uh, you know the the big topic was the DSDC decision. It had been delayed. Uh, when is it going to come? What's it going to look like? Well, as you all know, about a month ago that decision was announced. And uh, to summarize that, uh, and I will summarize some of the emails that I've sent to you all as well with regards to where we are and where we're going. As you all know, the design center will close, uh, and it could close at least on paper very, very soon, like potentially the day after tomorrow. Uh, but all of our positions will migrate to uh, one of the three key business areas identified in the study, and those business areas are the Defense Logistics Support Command, uh, Defense Contract Management Command, or the Office of the Chief Information Officer. Since the study was, uh, was announced, uh, I have been officially tasked as leading the effort to disestablish the command and migrate our workforce to the business areas. Uh, Clearly a, a, a tough job, but one that I'm ready to tackle and have lots of help uh, in doing so. Uh, before I embark on a discussion of where we are and how we're doing it, uh, one more comment. The success of our ability to migrate to the business areas is predicated upon each and every one of us continuing to do the outstanding job that we did yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It is vital to the agency's mission that we continue to support our standard systems and deliver ourselves to the gaining business area as a functioning unit. And, and that is understood. That is, that is something that is absolutely key. So, you know, coming to work and supporting SAM, supporting MOCAS, uh, and all the other systems out there, DAISY, FLIS, DSS are things that are absolutely vital. Uh, our effort to remediate our operational systems for Y2K compliancy and test them and demonstrate and prove to OSD and others that they're ready to go is absolutely vital, will continue to be funded and, uh, and must be done. And, and our success is, uh, is predicated upon that. So you know, we, we've got lots to do and, uh, and a, a very clear future mission. So. How are we going to uh, 
disestablish the command and migrate to the business areas. <coughs> the, the, the decision and the study that led up to the decision uh, was mute on implementation issues. Uh, it was a study that was embarked upon to identify a future positioning of IT resources within the agency based upon uh, changing business needs, changing uh, financial uh, structures, changing funding streams, and, uh, and did not dwell on the hows, but dwelled on the whats. So when the study was announced, uh, the questions immediately came up as to how we're going to do it. And, and the study itself does not answer any of those questions. Uh, so I was tasked to, uh, to come up about 10 days after the study was announced uh, and brief Admiral Chamberlain and the executive management team on a proposal on how we were going to do it. That brief was more a, a, uh, an effort to gain their support and understanding of how complex the, uh, the process was going to be uh, as opposed to any presentation of a detailed timeline and detailed strategy. What evolved out of that meeting was a tasking for me to go back and form four working groups that focused on business practices, organizational structure and site management, financial issues, and personnel issues associated with implementation and come up with a plan, a, a top-level plan or what I, uh, what I refer to as the 50,000-foot-level plan which I will go back with those team leaders and present to Admiral Chamberlain and the executive management team next week. And based upon their concurrence with that plan, then I will go back into a huddle with all those folks and, uh, and drop that 50,000 foot level plan down to the 20,000 or 15,000 foot level and come back to them with an update on the 12th of January. And then based upon that, continue to refine that. And uh, the vision is that the process will be completely done uh, in nine to 12 months. So nine to 12 months from the 10th of November, the day the, uh, the uh, decision was, uh, was announced. So what does that all mean? Uh, <coughs> preliminarily, uh, we have come up with some assumptions that need to be validated by the executive management team that, uh, that are probably best encapsulated in, in the draft general order that is now working its way through headquarters that will disestablish us. Uh, the draft general order states that we will disestablish as a command on Thursday uh, and turn right around and establish in its place a, uh, an office, which, uh, which I have chosen to use the term transition management office, that looks and smells just like the DSDC command and administrative structure that is in place today. And that command and administrative structure is responsible for overseeing the orderly transition of mission, function, workforce to the gaining business areas in the coming nine to 12 months, continuing to administer to all the personnel needs that go along with that in the nine to 12 months. And at the end of that transition period, which is about the 1st of October of 99, will cease to exist. Uh, all the personnel, administrative policies and pre procedures that are in place today will be in place uh, on Friday if the, if the draft order is assigned by then, and, and very, very little will change overnight. But gradually, in the coming year, uh, we will put additional detail onto our transition plan, and things will gradually begin to change. Uh, one of the areas that is, that is near impossible to change overnight gracefully is our funding process. As you know, we're now a fee-for-service organization. Information Systems is a business area chartered by the Office of the Secretary of Defense and as such requires their endorsement approval to be taken down. 
we are going forth with a proposal to disestablish the information service business area within DLA and cease the fee-for-service uh, business that we're in, uh, concurrent with the transition of our workforce to uh, the business areas, but that takes time. We believe that we will achieve that by the beginning of fiscal year 00, uh, which means that we'll continue to do fee-for-service like bookkeeping and, uh, and financial practices through fiscal year 99, although the, uh, the comptroller shop at DLA is taking a look at ways to streamline that that makes sense, recognizing where we're going in 00. So uh, all the financial things that we have in place now will remain in place for the most part through fiscal year 99. Uh, with regards to personnel actions and organizational structure, you know, there are, some, there are clearly some, some uh, implications there to you all as a workforce. Uh, organizationally, the vision of the agency is to establish major subordinate command elements uh, that you migrate to structurally. So, for example, in Battle Creek or in Ogden, uh, those people will move to a, a major subordinate command, a Delsey element, uh, a name yet to be chosen, chosen, but they used to be called uh, management support activities, they used to be called field operating activities. Uh, DAS-C recently migrated to an organization called a business support unit, and business support unit may be the, the direction that the agency chooses. Uh, the point here is that the vision is that these new agencies, new activities will report directly to the major subordinate command, LC, uh, DCMC, or CI, and not to any particular PLFA that they happen to be co-located with. Uh, the, uh, I lost my train of thought for just a second. But the, uh, the point is that, uh, that the major subordinate commands uh, want to maintain uh, organizational control over IT resources, for the most part centrally, and, uh, and as such are going are gonna to establish these elements. From a personnel standpoint, uh, if, if you're familiar with the details and the mechanics of moving people, which I am in no way an expert on, I understand. I understand that that as you move people, you need to cite activity codes and you need to cite ultimately an appropriation spread uh, when you realign folks within the agency. And so these organizational structures need to be set up, and and we need to be in synchronization with the financial processes that are going to stand up in fiscal year zero zero. To, uh, to make that happen. So uh, we're well, lots of details yet to work out, but in all likelihood, physical movement on paper, if that makes sense, uh, actual movement on paper, and actual reassignment on paper to the major subordinate commands will in all likelihood uh, not occur until early in fiscal year 00, uh, in synchronization with the financial processes, the payroll processes, the personnel processes, and the systems that support them. Uh, operational control of us is something that can shift in advance of the actual organizational structures that are in place. And, uh, and uh, we're actively discussing the major subordinate commands assuming a more close operational control relationship with us uh, as the fiscal year, as the current fiscal year uh, progresses. And so in a, in a uh, you know, operational manner, they in many ways now dictate our workload to us through funding, so it would make sense that they assume a, a greater and greater control over us uh, in advance of the actual structure standing up. And the details of that are, are, uh, are still being worked out, but, uh, but for the most part, I don't see a, a big change in, in us and the way we do business uh, after that occurs. Because uh, in point of fact, 
uh, the procurement product line, the logistics product line, the distribution product line, and the supply product line, for the most part, do take their direction from Del C and DCMC. And, uh, and formalizing that uh, for those product line managers to, to, uh, to take uh, direction from those uh, major sporting commands shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have a big impact on us and, and in all likelihood will, will be transparent. Uh, that really concludes the, uh, the remarks that I have as in terms of where we are and where we're going. Uh, we have the room for about two hours. Uh, the town hall meeting today, the first half of which will look very much like the, uh, the town hall meetings we've done in the past. The second half, uh, we have something a little different to do that I'll share with you more uh, in detail a little bit later. But at this time, uh, I'd like to turn it over to you all to ask uh, questions. Hopefully, I'll have some answers for you. Uh, if not, uh, I'll take questions as, uh, as homework assignments and work them and get back to you. But, uh, so, let's start here in Columbus. Mr. Real. Yes, Captain. The question I have is, for instance, under a particular business area, Delsey, mm -hmm. we have all the existing DSD support that they get from Delsey be under one organization, or does it look like it's going to be now seven organizations separated by geographic location? Can you tell that as yet? Can't tell it as yet, but I think it's going to be geographic organizations, individual business support units, or some other element like that, reporting to Delsey. There's still discussions at the Delsey level with regards to who exactly is going to control the DSS workforce, the FLIS and DAISY workforce, and the SAMS workforce, and others. But, uh, uh, but I believe they will be distinct business support units. There was a question in the back of the room. We've got a roll-in mic here that uh, we need to move around. When will we as a work unit, Captain, learn what our positions are okay. and which organization we will be assigned okay. to? That's a, that's a very good point, and one that I didn't, uh, didn't talk about. Uh, we have been in the, in the process right now of identifying and speaking to positions only and not positions specific to people in our allocation of resources to the business areas. You know, very early on, we were, we were forced to come up with proposed uh, assignments of positions to the business areas. So they had a feel for how many positions they were going to absorb and how many they would have to fund. Uh, a sensitive issue and one that I tried to desensitize and continue to try to desensitize by saying that it is position specific. Uh, of course, when you, when you start looking at positions and putting together a list, most of the systems that we have have names on there as well. And we have removed the name column and looked at positions only. Uh, very quickly, though, and when I say very quickly, within the next few weeks, we are going to have to map positions to people. And, uh, and I have uh, asked uh, our personnel specialists and our labor relations and, and union representation to be actively involved in the process we put in place to map positions to people. So that when we notify you, and as soon as we're done with that, we will, have, we will notify you of where you're ultimately going to go. Uh, you will understand the process that back that up. And, uh, and you will have an opportunity to challenge that process. Uh, so I, I'm not sure I answered your question in terms of timing, but uh, you're going to get notified as soon as possible, and you're going to have an opportunity to look at the process that we put in place to do that. I'm sure that there'll be some folks that are not happy with that, and, uh, and I can't guarantee that after you've challenged it that we're going to change our minds. But, but you will have an opportunity to be heard and, uh, and I will have a, a responsibility to respond to you on that, and I will. Yes, sir. So, 
Sir, in order to lighten the workload associated with that of people in positions in the different business areas, a number of folks would be willing to make a sacrifice and take advantage of beers that they were offered. I <laughs> there the possibility of beers before okay. fiscal 2000? Okay. Uh, of course there's a possibility, uh, but I cannot really assign any probability to it. Uh, let me back up and give you kind of a little bit longer answer to that. The DSDC study and decision was predicated upon implementation in fiscal year 00. And you'll ask, well, why are we doing it right now? <coughs> and the reason is because when the decision was briefed to the Office of the Secretary of Defense, uh, the first 28 minutes of the brief, which uh, discussed how we did it and, uh, and what the outcome was, was all, you know, you know, a sunshine and, and, and happy brief. And then when it came to the implementation uh, timeline, uh, it turned to a firestorm because the uh, Office of the Secretary of Defense says, don't come and tell me this, and oh, by the way, you're not going to do it for a year. I want you to start doing it now. And that's where the now came from. So the, the study was predicated upon executing the POM, which we talked about the last time I was up here, that included uh, a 250-person downsize and DSDC in 00, and a 50 to 58 person uh, downsize in 01. Uh, and th that's when it's budgeted for. That's when it was planned on based upon understanding workload communicated to us and also the risks associated with Y2K and, uh, and standing up some major systems and retiring some legacy systems. Major so, uh, my initial marching orders have been to, uh, to assume that there'll be no uh, Visa Vera in advance of 00. But I can tell you that, that business areas, understanding their workload as they do, and also understanding uh, that a Visa Vera is coming in 00, are interested in, in looking at alternatives that would allow them to while balancing mission requirements with funding, with people considerations, might give them the opportunity to offer that incentive uh, earlier. So we're looking at that. The, the, uh, the jury's still out on it. Uh, and it's one of the issues that, that I'll be talking about tomorrow when I travel to Washington. <coughs> Next question. All the way in the back. Yes, good morning, sir. Uh, I'd like to know if uh, we would have the uh, ability and made available to us for the priority placement program for those who'd like to take it. You know, I, I don't know why we wouldn't. It would seem to me that the priority placement program is a tool that would uh, benefit us as well. But, but uh, you know, I, I don't know enough about the details. And I don't think our, our personnel specialist is, is here today because of a, of a family commitment. Uh, Nick? Yeah, I'll just make a comment. We need to get the mic. Uh, normally what happens in a situation like this is the Bureau of Visa is offered first, and then if you don't get the number of people to uh, voluntarily leave, then you kick in what is called the priority placement or RIF procedures and those type of things. So I would say that's down the road a little ways before you can start signing people up for priority placement, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right, just a couple rows back, Kathy. Um, when we were here before, uh, basically what I heard was it was going to happen quickly and we were going to know uh, which people were going where within the next week or weeks or month, and they were going to start cutting paperwork to, to move personnel January or March. Uh, I get the feeling all of this has slid quite a bit. Uh, into later a 99. Am, am I hearing this right? You are hearing it right. Uh, the notion of being able to do it quick, although maybe attractive, is, is not practical uh, when you consider our financial systems. Cutting paperwork to move people from one organization to another ultimately involves citing a, an appropriation spread or a fund site that their payroll will come out of. And in the case of DCMC, for example, they are uh, operation and maintenance funded, an annual appropriation. 
and uh, and they don't have the money in their budget for fiscal year 99 to pay for the personnel that would come to them. Uh, can't be done. In the case of Delsey, uh, although they are also a defense working capital fund organization just like us, their personnel costs are wrapped up into a rate just like ours are wrapped up into a rate to be recovered through the work that they do, through the material that they buy and the material they issue to customers, and that rate is fixed. And to move uh, the number of folks that, uh, that we're talking about into their uh, appropriation would be unrecoverable and, uh, and require some adjustment. So the, the short answer is, as is often the case, the bill payer and the bill payer systems drive the timeline, and, and that is what's happening here with us. Right here. Okay, Ka Kathy. Or... Um, thank you. Uh, Captain, I was wondering if when we are moved into the Del C, DCM, C, and CI agencies, Will their commanders or directors uh, be coming here to tell us what they expect out of us? As far as mission. I'm sorry, as far as mission okay. accomplishment is concerned. Uh, it's, good, it's a good question. Pardon me. Uh, communication uh, from the gaining business areas to you, the workforce. I intend to invite. Uh, DCMC and Delsey leaders to Columbus uh, and, and to conduct down, town halls much as we uh, are doing now and also uh, encourage them and I will travel with them to our sites throughout the country to do the same thing face to face. Uh, and something that we'll do uh, as quickly as possible and more and as frequently as required through the coming months. But uh, yes, I expect them to come and, and look all of you in the eye and talk to you uh, tell you what their vision is and, uh, and tell you what their expectations are. Uh, one of the things that, that is probably a good time for me to talk about is just what exactly does my charter as the implementation team leader include? And, and as I understand it, and as I have uh, discussed with the CIO and the deputy director, uh, my job is to deliver to the business areas a functioning unit that will then be absorbed into a structure that the business area has defined and is really very much step one in an ongoing reorganization and uh, modernization effort in the information technology area. Uh, my charter is to realign us, not to reorganize us. And, uh, and in, in doing that, to take the initial steps to disestablish fee-for-service and, and move the resources that currently come to us back to the business areas. So there's, there's a lot more to do that, uh, that is not being done by, by my implementation team in the coming years. And, and that is really the, the, the assumption of the DSDC study that uh, disestablishing the command, moving them back to the business areas, creating this strategic alliance between customer and provider that is seamless, uh, will set the stage for uh, additional efficiencies, additional innovation, uh, you know, uh, greater achievements in information technology that will allow the agency to modernize and do a better job and provide support to the warfighter better, faster, and cheaper. Better, faster, and cheaper were buzzwords that I heard last week at the Senior <coughs> Leaders Conference. If I heard it uh, 20 times, I probably heard it 200 times that day. And, uh, and this is a, a necessary initial step that, uh, that allows them to achieve that in the coming years. There was a question right down here. It looks like Mr. Troop. Yes, sir. Will the uh, ITMT study ever be released? Good question. Uh, two, two months ago, I said I would uh, work like heck to get that thing out on the web and let everybody take a look at that. I've been unsuccessful in getting that done to date. Uh, but I'm still working it. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the study itself has, uh, has not yet been released 
to all members of the implementation working group. Uh, and uh, and I'm working that issue. I'd like to have them at least have the excerpts of the alternatives chosen to, uh, to give them some background information. But uh, I'm still working it, but uh, haven't been successful yet. several employees who are eligible for promotion under our current org structure, I have the vacancies to be able to promote them into. Um, how will our current personnel status affect my ability to promote those employees who are deserving of it? Okay, good question. Uh, there is a, uh, a uh, there's draft guidance that's coming out of the implementation team uh, due to be signed this week that imposes some restrictions on us during this transition period. Uh, those restrictions uh, include basically a hiring freeze. We've been under a pretty much a hiring freeze and bringing new people into the organization for some time. There's been some exceptions to that, but not many. Uh, there'll be fewer exceptions to that in the coming weeks and months. Uh, with regards to promotion, uh, those folks that are in career progression uh, positions, uh, 5, 7, 9, 11 positions, will continue to get promoted on their career ladder. Uh, we have the flexibility to continue to do temporary assignments to maintain the, the uh, wholeness of our organization, but uh, uh, not permanent ones. Any permanent promotion or permanent actions uh, need to get the approval of the gaming business area before we do, and we're setting procedures in, up in place to, to run those up for their chain, for their endorsement, uh, before we do that. Uh, basically, anything that we do to incur an obligation to the gaming business area will require their endorsement during the transition period. Since we don't know who's going to what business area, we're in fact then we're promoting people for our Well, now let me, let me answer that question. If, if you work on SAMS today, or the, the preponderance of your time is associated with SAMS, you're going to go to Delsi. If, if the preponderance of your time is associated with MOCAS, you're going to go to DCMC. Uh, if you sit in Ogden or New Cumberland and work DSS, you're going to go to Delsey. Uh, if you work information assurance or are a key member of the Y2K management team, uh, you're going to end up with CI. And, uh, and so take a look at what you do today because the overriding uh, philosophy of this, of this decision and implementation is as is, where is. So what you're doing today pretty much defines where you go. Now, some of you uh, are, uh, are devoted to supporting multiple customers, and, uh, and the division of your time does not easily lead you down one path or another. And those are the, one, those are the positions that we are working real hard to make sure they place right. And, uh, and we've spelt, spent a great deal of time looking at our T organization, which uh, supports multiple customers across major subordinate command lines to make sure we get that right. And our guidance has been to take a look at agency-wide resources, agency-wide infrastructure support, and for the most part, not break that up when it would not serve the agency well and move those resources to CI. Uh, and and that's, that's an ongoing work in process. That, uh, that we have not yet finished, but, uh, but we hopefully are getting closer to every day as we refine that. Did I answer your question, Ed? Okay. Let's, uh, let's uh, go out to the field and see if there's any, uh, any questions out there. Let's, uh, let's start east and work west. Ogden, you got any questions? <laughs> no, I meant start west and work east. Ogden. <laughs> Anybody out in Ogden have a question? <laughs> Moving right along. Captain? Yes, go ahead. First one is, as your staff, your command and staff office, 
begins to stand down what it's doing today and takes on the mission of the transition team. Can we expect some or all of the reporting requirements that we get from you go away to allow us to uh, work with our new and see what kind of reporting requirements they want? And, that, and then my second question is, as you look at the organizations and you're working on how we're going to look, particularly as a satellite, has any consideration been given to some kind of support staff at these sites, like a, you know, albeit small, like to one, two, three person shop, to coordinate with the business areas on business functions like budget and accounting support and that kind of thing? Okay. <laughs> Question one. Uh, as the transition management office stands up and the command structure uh, declines, is, would you see a change in the reporting requirements internal with DSDC? Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that we continue to do basic business. I think I talked about that earlier. And uh, so those reporting requirements that add value and are a requirement as we continue to execute fee-for-service, albeit in an abbreviated fashion, as we continue to manage ourselves, albeit in a changing way, will continue. Uh, in short, I expect some things to decline over time, and I expect some reporting requirements to pop up as you start to align yourself with your gaining business area and do things more the way they want them rather than the way we've wanted them to be done. And uh, let me think about the second question. Oh, support staff. Uh, the support staff in place at the satellites uh, will, for the most part, migrate to the gaining business area. Uh, uh, unlike some of, the, some of the support staff here in Columbus that exists uh, really solely to support the flagpole and solely support the, the, uh, the overhead associated with the existence of, prim of a primary level field activity, the, uh, the support staff in the in the sites goes with the business area because it only exists out there to support that site. Now, additional support staff that may be required because of uh, business area requirements to do uh, financial things different or uh, report various uh, you know, workload or management activities differently will be something that, uh, that the business area uh, directs you to do and funds you to do and, uh, and as such, would, could conceivably cause some, some new positions. I don't see that happening right away. I see that as a reorganization effort after we are absorbed into the business areas. <laughs> okay, any other questions in Ogden? <laughs> Somebody might want to hit their mute button. <laughs> okay, Mel Beasley, anything in, in Battle Creek? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we heard you talk about how uh, the goal will be to uh, stand up a field office uh, of Delphi uh, for IT uh, services in Battle Creek. And uh, I was wondering if there's any discussion about uh, that field office being uh, one that includes all of the IT resources in Battle Creek, or are we just talking about the DSTC resources at this point? Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Init initially, uh, our tasking is only DSDC resources, uh, but step two could be the reorganization within the business area of all IT resources. Uh, again, that could be, uh, but that is that is beyond the scope of this implementation. one through me again? Yeah, what were the downside percentages that you had stated earlier by the year zero zero? Okay. 
Right now, the, uh, our budget, right. as communicated to us by the business areas, would drive us to reduce our end strength in 00 by 250 FTEs, and I think it's 58 FTEs in 01. So between 00 and 01, 308 positions. <laughs> And I, and I don't believe that that's a new number to, to any of us. That, that one's been, uh, been there for a long time. Any other questions in Battle Creek? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. What will happen to uh, civilian contract uh, support during the near future? Yeah, transition. Transition. Could I, could I ask you to ask that again? I got a dash from the microphone over to the speaker to hear you. Not the question enough. is, what will happen to civilian contract support during transition? Okay. Uh, civilian contract support, contracts that we have in place now for contractor resources, uh, will stay in place. That's a part of the as is, where is, continued execution in fiscal year 99. Uh, their renewal in uh, zero, zero uh, will be the, at the option of the business area, as I understand. Any more questions? Any more questions from Battle Creek? Feedback right now. That's a, this is a good signal to move on to New Cumberland. Okay, Captain. Can you hear us now? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. We have one more question in Battle Creek. Uh, Captain, this is Jerry Cool, AFGE. Can you tell me who the representative is going to be on your group uh, from AFGE? I heard you mention you're going to have union involvement in the in the design. Can you let me know who that's going to be, or do you know right now? I do, I do not know right now. The, the discussions and meetings that we have had at headquarters have been termed, uh, you know, pre-decisional management discussions to date. So all the information that I shared with you has yet to be validated by the, the headquarters executive management team. Uh, the timing of, of uh, bringing the union to the table and uh, participating with them in the details of the implementation will be determined by uh, the folks in headquarters, you know, principally in Mr. Ressler's office, and, uh, and the representation uh, of those union representatives will be worked with them and me uh, at that time. But, uh, I, I can't give you any details right now because I don't have any. Okay. Uh, I've been pushing Congressman Smith here in Battle Creek to acquire a copy of that study. Uh, it sounds as though no one is getting a copy of that study. Is that is that what I heard you uh, say a while ago? That's correct. <laughs> and uh, maybe Congressman Smith can uh, can break the log jam. That'd be well, great. If I get a copy, I'll send you one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Any other questions, Balfour? That's all, okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, New Cumberland, Lynn Johnson. Any questions from y'all? Well, sir, Lynn's not here today, but there are no questions in the room at this time. Okay, okay. Now, is, is Philadelphia or Fort Belvoir further, <laughs> further west? Let's go to Philadelphia. Good morning, Lou. Yeah, anybody have any questions in this room? We're at four locations in here. I don't believe there's any questions here. Unless Ben Johnson is visiting has one. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, I did have one question. Uh, you said that uh, the Delcy is deboff and that we will go be going away from fee for uh, service. Um, how will that be handled in uh, when we become part of Delcy? Well, if, uh, if they're still deboff. And, and, and they will remain, you know, Defense Working Capital Fund. There's no doubt about that. Our our costs will be absorbed into their rate. Uh, and in the, in the particulars of how exactly that's going to happen, I don't know. But uh, but we will become part of the supply or the distribution uh, business area in the Defense Working Capital Fund. 
for Delsey. Did that uh, answer your question, Lynn? For now, yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions up in Philadelphia? Hi, Captain. Um, I would let you know what you do. you have any definitive uh, plan for the uh, adoption of personnel, especially the information we've gotten in 2001 is going to be the largest loss of personnel? Have at this time a plan? Okay. How you're going to? Well, we'll certainly be working a plan and making some res uh, recommendations. One of the one of the uh, uh, impacts of of this decision and the timing of that decision forces the business areas to take a more active role in the zero zero and zero one downsizing. You know, as it's as it stood uh, as it stood stood before the decision was announced is the. You know, it was really up to us to determine where we uh, executed that downsizing based upon POM figures provided from the business areas and estimated workload. And, uh, you know, the crystal ball that we had was, uh, was based upon, you know, information that we got from the business area representatives and, uh, and uh, you know, the basis of our working relationship with them. Now, th this really puts the monkey on their back to know what systems are going to be supported, what are no longer going to be supported, what their workload really is, and what their alternatives are uh, in IT funding. And, and they will take a, you know, as such, a much more uh, active role in the execution of that. We have an understanding of where we think the, the downsizing might be, but, but uh, you know, things could change. <coughs> Another question from Philadelphia? Captain. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, I'm going to ask about training. Go ahead. Is there a question about training? Uh, non mission critical training. Okay. Uh, uh, our guidance with regards to executing training is to, to continue to do the training that is. Uh, Project specific, mission specific, uh, and uh, and work with our gaining business areas on training requirements that they see us meeting, but uh, uh, developing initiatives to retool our workforce for the future based upon our vision of of where the agency is going, and and what we need to do to respond is something that we're not going to do during this transition period. Uh, we will continue to support tuition assistance. And, uh, and provide our associates the opportunity to, to gain additional education and, and, uh, and qualification and degree through that program and continue to support, uh, you know, mission critical training, but, uh, but retooling is something we're not going to do. Any other questions from Philadelphia? Captain. Go ahead. What is the plan for continuing the current uh, matrix structure during the transition, in particular the supervisor reporting chain, appraisals, awards, etc.? Okay. Uh, no supervisory subordinate relationships change immediately. Uh, the, the matrix management structure, for the most part, stays in place through the transition period. Uh, the, the notion I talked about earlier of shifting operational control uh, principally applies to our product line directors, and we're working the details of those uh, right now. Uh, it, it may involve issuing letters to the, uh, the product line directors saying simply that their operational control is now uh, Im embedded in the major subordinate commanders and identify a, an office code and a key point of contact there. But uh, below them, all supervisory uh, relationships will remain the same. <laughs> Any other questions of Philadelphia? Yes, one more, please. Go ahead. Uh, this isn't uh, directly related to the position, but it impacts a lot of people. Have you heard anything about the supply systems program office and headquarters? Uh, you mean the, uh, the uh, 
Modernization Program Office. Hey, Lynn, could you could you give me a little more information on on your question? The, the, uh, there was a proposal to form a supply systems program office. Uh, and, and I guess my follow-up was a proposal to perform to to form a business systems modernization program office within Delsey. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Yeah, I I know that that is a uh, an active proposal. I don't know if it's moved from proposal to fact yet. Uh, but uh, but it was talked about last week at the meeting I attended, uh, and uh, and I believe they're moving forward with that. I don't know if there's any structure yet in place, but uh, but I think that we can uh, we can pretty much assume that something like that is going to be stood up fairly soon. <laughs> any other questions in Philadelphia? Captain, good morning. It's Mike Hoffman from Philadelphia. Um, it seems the timeline for reorganization in year 2000 seems to be coinciding with one another. And not to be totally naive, a lot of our work at that time will uh, no longer exist. Um, can, can the business areas absorb the 600 or so I people that uh, are going to be left? Well, yeah. yes, I believe they can. Uh, but two or three years out, can they? Can we assume that they will continue to have those positions in place? I don't think no. I think no. But uh, but the plan is now for the, for them to absorb them. Yes. And the funding is there too. The funding the funding for every systems design center employee that's on on the rolls now is secure through fiscal year ninety nine. Uh, <laughs> through fiscal year ninety nine. Well, in, in fiscal year 00 and 01, clearly there is a downsize. But in fiscal year 99, the, uh, the folks, the 948 folks that we currently have on the rolls have been budgeted for. Any other questions in Philadelphia, please? Okay, let's get on to uh, Fort Belvoir. Yeah, well, a cut in zero zero is a lot worse. Yes, sir, this is Roger Winters. Uh, we have two factions here, so we may get some other questions. Hold on. Hey, Roger, I'm getting a lot of feedback from you on this speaker. Go ahead and try again. All right. I'm going to pick the handset up, sir. Okay. Uh, the, you've answered most of the part of the question I was going to ask about remote supervision. I assume that's going to continue since the organization is going to continue to function the way it has. Has been. The, the second part of the question is, are we still going to get performance appraisals when and our performance awards going to change? Are we still going to be, be expecting to get some okay. award system? That's a good, that's a good question. Perf the performance appraisal system will be, continue to uh, be administered in place under the transition management office. That's that administrative structure that oversees the transition process and continues to support DSDC much like it did. The, uh, you know, the awards uh, issue is, is a thorny one, I'll be honest with you on that. Uh, you know, initially, when, uh, when I thought that, uh, that we were going to be able to uh, migrate, absorb into the business areas quickly, uh, the notion was that, uh, well, any effort by me or others to, to quickly award the, the awards pot for fiscal year 99 and transfer to the business area as an empty pot would, would probably not be well received. Uh, and, uh, uh, but since that time, it appears that we are going to be around as an entity of some form uh, through the end of the fiscal year. I intend to engage my counterparts in uh, DCMC and Delsey uh, to invite them in to be a part of this, but uh, uh, the awards for fiscal year 99, you know, that we now hold are for work performed in 99 and a reasonable look back period, and I think that there'll be a reasonable accommodation to execute that. Any more questions?
questions right here? transition teams will this group of people be ever notified who's on those transition teams oh sure teams? sure we'll certainly publish lists there's no secret there at all in fact dsdc has representation on every one of the working groups that uh, that, that will feed the the, uh, the core team that i that i had uh, in uh, in business practices in fact the team lead in business practices is judy lantinga and uh, she is a uh, she is the leader of our software process uh, engineering group and uh, and uh, is charged with uh, steering the business practice team to become familiar with all the things we do to support them now and make sure that we deliver uh, units that continue to support the per support and perform those vital functions to them as as they assume responsibility for us the uh, uh, personnel team is chaired by a lady from headquarters whose name is Jan Hoffheins. She's a personnel specialist. It also includes participation from uh, Pat Palvino, who is our personnelist in DSDC, DSCC. You know, we, we do not have personnel specialists in the design center uh, per se. We rely on that support from DSCC. Uh, in the financial area, uh, Connie Tw Treadway, our comptroller, is... Uh, is, is on that uh, that uh, working group and and a vital part of uh, of providing them financial information on, uh, on our current and expected position through the transition period in the uh, business uh, the organizational structure and site management function Roger Winters who's been on the microphone from Fort Belvoir represents us on that and uh, and we also had uh, Nancy Maloney from uh, from the B organization up there last week on that, representing Chuck Canner shop. And we're live. Oh, I'm a I just set the light. Yeah, right. Oh, no. <laughs> Benny will be vice president. There's a question over here on the, uh, my right. <laughs> I could remind you folks out in the field to, to punch the mute button there when you're having a good time uh, in the room. We've heard the perspective of DSDC side. What about Del C D C M C and CIO and their respect to having to pick up the personnel that are being split from uh, DSDC and the light that are there will be quite a few people that are only applying 20, 30, 40 percent of their time to them now. Okay. Well, let me let me respond to the first part of that question. Uh, you know, there's a good deal of interest. I say that tongue-in-cheek uh, from the business area representatives to make sure that they get exactly the resources they need and and not any more than that uh, and so there's we're in the process of of, uh, of defining our process to uh, apply positions to business areas and, and working through that uh, and it's not an easy one let me tell you uh, the second part uh, of your question with regards to for those positions that are that have equal masters or or no clearly uh, uh, clear master that occupies a preponderance of time uh, if if those people are doing uh, or those positions are doing things that are agency wide things and 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 there's some of those in in T m many of them in T then they are likely going to go to CI and they will continue to do those agency level infrastructure things in CI. And, and the rationale for that is, is if we, uh, because they do 55% of their work for DCMC or DELC, assign that person to DCMC or DELC, we may be uh, creating an environment where we, in fact, have the business areas grow a larger organization than there is right now because it'll be too hard for them to reach over and touch that person in Delcy or DM, DCMC to do these things for them that, that they used to do in the design center, and they, they grow that resource. Now we have two FTEs instead of one. Uh, so we're, we're looking at that real carefully to make sure we, we do it right. We don't have 100% of the answer yet, uh, but over time I think we'll get to 99.9% of the answer. And, and uh, 
to the maximum extent possible the, the underlying process and rationale that will support this is, is the, the agency's business. And, uh, and I think if we continue to, to look at business practice as the reason we're doing things, then, then we can explain it to, and, uh, and come up with good answers to all the questions that are going to come from a variety of different angles on whys and wheres and hows we got to the answer. It's all going to be rooted in business practices. Uh, okay. so, were you in that? Was another teleconference, another meeting about this here? Yes, sir. Captain, as you keep, uh, we're talking about DLA as the agency, but mm -hmm. a big portion of our work is with DFES. How right. are they going to be affected okay. by the changeover? The current, the current position now, and I believe one that was that is going to remain firm, is that our workload for DFES is a DOD department level mission that we have. And we're going to continue to do that. Uh, right now, uh, the preponderance of that work is very closely aligned and embedded in, in MOCAS. And, and uh, most of the MOCAS resources migrate to DCMC. And that's where the preponderance of that, those positions will go. I understand that, that, that uh, you know, many, many people are involved in DFAS support a portion of their time. So the, the ability to precisely carve out positions that are 100% DFAS supporters is, is, is limited, if doable at all. We also have DFAS support embedded in, in uh, DISMs and in SAMs and in DFAMs, basically any system that pays bills, cuts checks, has some DFAS functionality in it. And, uh, uh, but we're going to continue to do that work. That is, that is DLA's uh, position right now. We're going to continue to do that work. That is, that's important to the agency and important to the department. And so we're not going to abandon that or transfer it to DFAS. <coughs> Question right up here in the front. Sir, this is Eric Dar. In the late 60s, there was a popular philosophy that we must destroy the system in order to save it. Those folks all knew that they didn't like what there was, but they didn't have a clear idea of what to put in its place. It strikes me from what I've heard, that's kind of what's happening here. Could you comment on that, sir? I could, but I'm not sure it'd be real meaningful. <laughs> uh, Yes, you know, that is certainly one way of interpreting what you see going on around you, right? Uh, there is a, you know, I quickly came to, feed, came to understand that there is a body of, of uh, scholastic uh, literature out there on information technology that will support virtually any decision or direction uh, you want to take, whether it's to centralize, whether it's to decentralize, uh, or any other flavor that, uh, that you choose to do. And, uh, and so clearly there are dissenting opinions all over the place. But uh, the important thing here is that our director has made a decision and, uh, and uh, given me orders to march out and do this. And, uh, and we need to do it. We need to get on with it. And we need to continue to support the agency in whatever organization and in whatever role we evolve into in the coming months and years. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, for me personally and for the team members that I'm working with, there is a good deal of discovery as we work through this process in finding the boundaries of the playing field that we're working on. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. Now, what, oh, yep. Go ahead. You, you almost uh, missed it. From Philadelphia. Go ahead. Uh, can you tell us what our name is going to be after the disestablishment? Uh, no, I can't. I think that uh, we're going to leave your name in place for the most part. I don't want an identity crisis on Monday, uh, Monday morning, so we'll probably leave the name in place and, uh, and figure that one out at a later date.